this is Wilderness Strong on Fire. And we're entering part four of our fire series where we're covering our favorite tinders for using with a fire steel. But even more important than that, we'll reveal what we consider to be possibly the single most important tip for igniting even the most stubborn tinders coming up. Hey, I'm Luke. This is Wilderness Strong, and we're all about bushcraft, nature, ethnobotany, and wilderness survival. If you're into all that too, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and turn on that notification bell so you can know when each video posts. Also, there's one fire steel tip at the end of this video that might make all the difference between success and failure for you on your next venture in the wild. Now, with all that said, let's make some fires. First of all, we got to clear something up. Many people erroneously consider the best tinders to simply be the ones that are the most flammable initially. You know, the kind that just burst into flame after one stroke of the ferro rod. And of course, these tinders have their place and it's easy to see why they are so sought after. But the problem with this mentality is thinking that all good tinders should just ignite quickly to be considered the best tinders. While casting off the less flammable tinders, which in some cases end up being much better tinders overall. So our collection of top tenders does not mean exclusively the ones that are initially the most flammable. Well, let's just start lighting things up so you can see what we're talking about. So here's an example of what we call a flash tender. Cattail down is very flammable. It ignites with one stroke of the rod and it doesn't need a lot of spark to take off. And here's why that's good. It's almost a guarantee that you can get it to flame and it's going to flame up big, especially if you have a lot of it. But at the same time, if you keep it in its natural state, loose and fluffy, you'll see that you truly only have seconds before that flame dies out, which can give off a false sense of security when it's underneath your kindling pile. The flames will surround your kindling, but the flash tinder can't sustain enough heat long enough to light it up, especially if your kindling has any moisture in it. This leaves you with just black charred kindling as your flash tinder quickly chars and the flame disappears. Now it's true you could keep blowing on it, turning it, reigniting it, and possibly get it to take, but it's gonna be a challenge. So here's one way that we use flash tenders like cattail thistle and cottonwood down. Since we've only got a few seconds of flame, we'll use the flash tender down to ignite a more sustainable tender like cedar in this case. You might ask, well, why not just light the cedar? And we definitely could do that. But what if there was a bit of moisture in our cedar or we just wanted to ignite our nest quicker? The flash tinder makes a great instant flame for igniting a more sustainable tinder bundle. Now let's take a look at some more sustainable tinders like barks and shavings. Okay, we had to get fat wood just out of the way first. We all know that it's pretty much the king fire starter due to the resin deposited in the wood, which makes it flammable and long burning. In fact, we know this so well that we made an entire video that goes deep into finding, collecting, processing, and burning fatwood, even turning it into long burning torches. We'll go ahead and link to it, but you make sure to finish this video first before you check it out. Ocean spray shavings work very well. Notice too how we pick it up for a second to let the air in, and many times we'll give our bundle a quick roll to rotate the shavings so that they're above the hottest part of the nest. These are willow shavings from a dead branch. Now willow doesn't take quite as quick as some of the other favorites, but once it goes, it holds the flame plenty long to ignite our first layer of kindling. Man, we love maple. Dead dry maple bark lights up quick and burns plenty long and hot. Where we come from, maple is very common and it's always one of our top tender choices. Same story with cottonwood. This is the inner bark from a cottonwood tree. It ignites quick and it's plenty sustainable. And what if you don't have access to bark or wood shavings or you just want a different kind of tinder? Well, there's several grasses and weeds that'll also get the job done. This dead grass we used needed a few more strikes initially, but once it took, it smoldered into a long lasting hot ember. This is yucca and it's a desert plant that can also produce quality tinder. Here's fireweed, and it's an interesting tinder because it takes a little bit to blow it into a flame, and it makes the perfect segue, actually, into a topic that we gotta cover, and that is smoldering tinders. Now, you'll remember my short little rant in the beginning about claiming certain tinders to be the best just because they flame up quicker. Well, this isn't always an advantage. Ultra-flammable, quick-burning tinders, they do just that. They burn quick. And so many times that leads to failed fires because they can't burn long enough to ignite the kindling. 
And what if you absolutely have to use less than optimal kindling? Maybe it's a bit moist or a bit green or just a bit punky. Do you really want a quick burning ultra flammable tinder underneath that pile? And here's where we enter in smoldering tinders. So why are smoldering tinders so good? For one, time. Depending on which tinder you use and the quantity, they can smolder for several minutes, even hours, if they're prepared right. That's why they were used anciently by Native Americans for fire carriers. They will catch and hold your initial spark and go into a long smolder if you keep nurturing it, which not only buys you more time, but also heats and dries the kindling in the process. This is optimal tinder to use if you have less than optimal kindling. Stinging nettle is the perfect example of a tinder that many would not consider optimal. That's because it's pretty resistant to taking that initial spark and it's so stubborn when it comes to actually bursting into flame. But we'll show you why we like it for tinder. It smolders, it gets hot, and it dries out the kindling and then the kindling actually bursts into flame as a result of the heat from the tinder. So you can tell how much we love these smoldering tinders, but you can also create smoldering tinders from your flash tinder. Watch how we do this with a mulched up cattail down and check out how slow we're able to go in making this fire. Of course, in real life, we'd already have our kindling set up and ready to go, but we wanted to demonstrate how effective smoldering tinders can be when it comes to holding an ember. Check out this comparison between the flash tinder cattail that has been processed and the one that hasn't. The mulched up tinder pretty much blew away the loose, unprocessed down head to head. This is cotton from a cottonwood tree. We've turned this into a smoldering tinder. It took a spark very easily and it'll smolder for plenty of time to get a fire started. Usnia, also called old man's beard, could be considered a smoldering tinder, but the fact that it flamed up so quick and then almost started to melt means you may have a bit less time with this one unless you collect a large quantity. This is just a fungi that we pried off of a Douglas fir tree. This falls more into the category of letting you know what's possible, because it took some work to get it to take and it needs some extra air to keep it going but sometimes the best tinder is just the tinder that you have available to you. And of course, we have cedar and redwood. They are incredible smolder tinders, and we're about to show you specifically why. But look at this pile of processed cedar. Not only does it take a spark quick, it gives us a quick burst of flame, which means it'll get your kindling going if it's dry and placed right. But even better than that, watch what happens when the flame disappears. A nice hot smolder starts happening and it grows deeper and deeper inside. But unlike other smoldering tinders like stinging nettle, this cedar will produce a flame just about any time you ask it to, if you just give it some air. And if you're not ready for a flame yet, it'll just sit there until you're ready. It really is, in my opinion, the most patient and reliable of all tinders. We intentionally chose sticks off the ground so we could demonstrate how the smoldering cedar dries out less than optimal kindling. We could even see the moisture evaporating out of the wood as it sat on top of this hot smoldering tinder. Okay, you've waited for it. And here's our one essential tip for fire steel fire making. Like so many tips we give, it begins with a problem. In so many failed fire steel attempts, we've seen the same issue. Many people have an expectation of what is supposed to happen when they shower sparks down on their tinder. Their expectation is that the sparks will set the tinder on fire. And yes, many times that is the case if you have the right tinder and the right fire steel. But tinders all have these different personalities. And just because they don't light up immediately doesn't make them inferior or unusable. And we've seen too many people give up on their tinder or blame their tinder just because their expectation of how it's supposed to respond to the fire steel is inaccurate. In fact, most of the smolder tinders we love to use, they take a few repeated strikes to flame and form an ember. And we've already shown how valuable those tinders can be. So our one essential trick is to take the emphasis off of showering down sparks onto your tinder, hoping that it'll catch the tinder on fire, and instead focus on charring one specific area of your tinder, 
with your fire steel pressed firm on the ground, hitting it over and over and over with short, quick strokes until it forms embers in the area that you've charred. In fact, I was just watching a show last night with my family about a bushcrafter and he was out in the wild and he was trying to get a fire going using a fire steel with a nice cedar bundle that he had. And it was definitely moist conditions, I could tell. And this cedar bundle did not have a chance of going up in flame no matter how much spark he was going to rain down on it. But we know from our experience that if he had been using this technique, he could have got that bundle charred and an ember formed inside of it and then nurtured it into flame. Because again, this technique is not about showering sparks down on your tinder, hoping to catch your tinder on fire. This technique is all about targeting a specific area of the tinder and hitting it over and over until it chars so that it's able to accept an ember once you get it hot enough. Now we are very familiar with the logic that says that we shouldn't strike towards our tinder because we're gonna knock it around. But it just takes a bit of practice and shorter strokes to keep that from happening. And of course we're open-minded that it can also be effective to use the pulling technique and pull your steel across your blade away from your tinder to prevent that from happening. We've done that method as well, but that's with dry flammable tinders that can just ignite from having sparks drop down on them. Because in my opinion, we should all be experienced in multiple methods and techniques and certain tinders just won't light using the pull technique. And they specifically need this charring technique that we're covering right now. Okay, anyway, for easy tenders, it won't take too many strikes to get it into flame with this technique. But watch what happens when we try this method on dead moss, which even has the green still in it. These might look like failed attempts at first, and it would be normal for someone to quickly assume that this is a bad tinder. But remember, we're not really even trying to set the moss on fire with the sparks. Rather, we're just working on charring one focused area so that it can take a spark and form embers that can be blown into flame. And the result here speaks for itself. There's pretty much no way you could light this moss up just by dropping sparks down on it. It needs more direct, repeated strikes to get enough heat. Okay, watch this technique again, this time with dry rot from an alder tree. We're not trying to set the dry rot on fire with the sparks, so to speak. We are charring it, heating it up, until embers can form that can be nurtured into flame. Again, we know that throwing sparks down on the tinder from above will work with optimal tinder like fatwood and birch and most flash tinders. But you don't always have the luxury of having access to these tinders. And we firmly believe in the importance of gaining experience with multiple techniques, multiple tools, and multiple resources so that you can be prepared for multiple situations out in the wild. Only one video left in this series, and I promise it's not gonna disappoint you. In fact, we're pretty sure you're gonna see something in the final video that you haven't seen before when it comes to using flint and steel. And we can't wait to bring it to you. In the meantime, make sure you're subscribed and the notification bell is on so you don't miss when it posts. Hey, also make sure you hit the big old thumbs up and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys and gals and we'll see you in the next one.